Well, yeah. once again, everyone, you're very welcome to this, our second uh, session in this S Sycamore series. Um, and tonight, we, Susan's going to take us through um, listening to each other in the Holy Spirit. So I thought I'd start with a, with a very short prayer, but also the shortest of readings. And um, it's one of my favourite because it just conjures up all sorts of things in my mind. But we'll start with saying in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So this is a reading from the very first chapter and verses of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth, earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Sometimes we talk about the Holy Spirit as though it's something of the 21st century, something just new for us. And yet that short uh, scripture reading just shows us that the Holy Spirit there was there before there was anything else created. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters and over the earth. And, um, and that, for me, it, it just speaks profoundly to me that about God's Spirit and, um, and how we should listen to the Spirit and how we should listen to each other. Um, under the guidance of the spirit, the guidance of our tradition. So I'm going to just like to say a prayer to the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, comforter and sanctifier, melt our hearts that we may accept your love. Renew our minds that we may know your truth. Strengthen our wills that we may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Thank you. It's over to you, Susan. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. That was a really beautiful reading um, and very much in the spirit of this evening's session, which I hope is going to be um, really prayerful and reflective, but also um, a wonderful space for us to sort of look at our synodal journey and look at us as community and as church and to think about how we go about speaking and listening to each other. So tonight's session, that was, as I said, a perfect way to start. What I wanted to do was to just outline for you um, how we're gonna be spending our time um, this evening. As I said, really lovely to be back with you. Obviously the first session, um, I was looking at introducing Sycamore to you and bringing Sycamore to you as, as a diocese um, to show you the resource and to sort of explain how you can use it. But this session and the, the sessions that will follow are slightly different now. And we want to really be thinking about becoming really engaged in all of those um, all of those roles and tasks and responsibilities that we highlighted as part of that first synodal phase um, and to be really thinking what we need to do as a community. Um, and before we do any of that very important work to really root ourselves in prayer and to root ourselves in Jesus and harness and ask for um, the Holy Spirit to be with us as we as we engage in this very important work of speaking and listening to one another. So this is going to be um, this is going to be our task for this evening and our theme. So what I'd like to do, and as I said, it was lovely to hear that scripture reading from David um, to start with. We're going to really think about being um, prayerful and reflective this session, um, as we do always, really. But to really be harnessing that and thinking about how we can come together. Um, to engage each other, to hear what each other has to say in a really constructive and prayerful way, um, and to be energized 
um, because as we will see when we, we look at the uh, encyclical that um, I recommended to you all, um, this is what the this is what came across for me through that um, reading is being energized and really enlivened um, by the Holy Spirit, um, both you know individually, but as uh, as we come together as community. So we're going to be looking um, a little bit at a couple of the readings that I suggested. Um, I hope everyone uh, received the email and the link to the Sycamore session. So this was Sycamore session five, um, which is called the Holy Spirit and the Church. And I wanted to bring this to you just as a way of giving this lovely foundation um, for us this evening to sort of build on and to hopefully um, inspire us in some really wonderful discussion. Um, so that session um, hopefully would have introduced you to some of these key themes that we'll be thinking about this evening in terms of the way in which the Holy Spirit um, gives us and empowers us um, to make the most of our life in the church and with each other. So then when we come to um, thinking about our discussion, because as Mark said, hopefully we'll have two key discussion areas this evening. Um, and what I want to do is to think about how we talk to each other and how we listen to each other. Sometimes we do a lot of talking and listening can be a harder thing to do. Sometimes we don't always hear what we want to hear. But it's finding really constructive ways um, through the Holy Spirit to do that so that we come out um, strengthening each other as the body of Christ. So we're going to think about how we talk to each other, what our experiences are um, currently, to think about any challenges that we that might be there. But more importantly, then to lead into the skills that we might need, how we harness um, our, our communication with each other um, and to think about some of the skills that we might need, some of the resources and to point us to the next steps. What do we see as being the next steps for us and the church um, together as a community? So these are um, the ways in which that we're going to think about um, engaging with some of these topics um, this evening. So I'm going to speak to you for a little bit. We're going to look at one segment of um, the Sycamore film hopefully just to reinforce what you saw when you watched it um, before the session. Then we're going to go into breakout rooms and we're going to have some really hopeful and positive sharing. So one of the things I wanted to do was to draw your attention to the catechism. It gives us this wonderful explanation um, and uh, foundation for the way in which the Holy Spirit enters our lives um, and stays with us all the time as individuals and community. Um, building us up. But I wanted to draw your attention to this particular um, section of the read of the catechism that I highlighted for you. Um, and I'm just going to read this out because I think it highlights some of the key issues that we need to be thinking about as church. Um, and we'll, I'll read this out. And then if anyone would like to comment on any of the other elements that of the sections that I've referred to, please feel free to do that. So this is from um, 791 of the Catechism, and it reads, The body's unity does not do away with the diversity of its members. In the building up of Christ's body, there is engaged a diversity of members and functions. There is only one spirit who, according to his own richness and the needs of the ministries, gives his different gifts for the welfare of the church. The unity of the mystical body produces and stimulates charity among the faithful. From this, it follows that if one member suffers anything, all the members suffer with him. And if one member is honoured, all the members together rejoice. And then finally, the unity of the mystical body triumphs over all divisions. For as many of you were baptised into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And for me, this was a beautiful excerpt from, um, from the, the passages that I referred you to, because we're talking about unity, we're talking about charity and being one body, one mystical body, and that we are together together. Um, unified in Christ um, and this sense of being given um, different gifts and charisms as well um, 
because and through our baptism in Christ. So this wonderful unity that exists, I think for me, um, as well as recognising all of our gifts and talents and our rich diversity um, is what is highlighted for me and was particularly important. Um, does anyone have anything to share before I move on from elements that they particularly found um, useful or helpful through the, through the segments of the catechism that I referred you to? And even if you don't feel at the moment, maybe this will come up in our discussions um, when we're in breakout rooms, just to think through some of those uh, excerpts that might have really resonated with you um, and caused you to think and reflect on the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Um, and I just wanted to draw your attention to the rich heritage, really, that we have um, that we come to um, through the uh, the wonderful leadership um, of the church. So St. John Paul II has been very careful to tell us this is what we believe, to really outline and clarify our faith. Pope Benedict XVI, bringing his intellectual charisms to say this is why we believe it. This is the, this is the body and the understanding and foundation for what we believe. And Pope Francis moving then to this very important emphasis on how, the how. how this is how we um, share our faith. This is how we believe. So this, to me, is a very important and key element and theme um, for our discussions and our, our reflections this evening, because we want to be engaged. We want to be really coming together to look at how we are as church and how we um, live out our faith but how we do that in a really effective and responsible way. Because, and this is when I first started uh, talking to David about the prospect of these, um, these sessions with you, um, he was talking about all the progress and the wonderful learning that had come through your synodal, well, the synodal journey that we've all been through, but as a diocese, some of those reflections that you shared so we're all on this synodal journey and we all want to understand more fully the how, how we believe and how we are as church. And the synodal journey is what literally has brought us together this evening. It's what has brought me to connect with David um, and to bring Sycamore and share Sycamore with you as well. We're all on this journey. So it's about understanding. And Pope Francis is very clear in sort of helping us to understand that this how is articulated in lots of different ways um, and ways that we need to keep at the center of our lives um, and the center of our communities. Sort of recognizing really that we all make mistakes and that actually there's we're human beings interacting with each other and that's gonna be lively and it's going to be um, fruitful, but at times we make mistakes, but it's to keep these key themes, these key uh, uh, concepts, understanding at the center of our relationships, because he acknowledges that we are relationship centered. We are relational people. Um, we really come alive when we are with each other, um, sharing and discussing. So relationship is key. It's our relationship founded that we have with Jesus Christ, but it's also the relationship that we have um, as church. So it's having this openness, this receptivity that he talks about all the time to love, love our neighbour, love others, really listening with that receptive outlook and approach and listening in an effective way. We've heard much really in the, in the last few years about the importance of active listening. And hopefully this evening we will think together what that means, what that looks like how we really listen to each other so that we're hearing the other perspective. Courage. It takes courage. Um, and, and Pope Francis understands how much we need courage to be moving forward, to really look um, in a, a, a profound and reflective way on the way we are relational, relational with others, the way we are as church. And he says that takes courage. It takes courage to admit when we've done... Um, the wrong thing or we've not done things as we should but it takes courage and, and receptivity to move forward and moving forward he really does emphasize this key theme about accompaniment we are journeying together and that's what the whole synodal uh, pathway is about it's about journey 
and it's about accompanying each other. And I think it's this culmination, this multifaceted approach mindset of the how that brings us to this real synodal approach that brought me to meet David and for him to outline all the work that you've done as a diocese to explore what it means to be a synodal people. So the how is very important. Um, and synodality, we've heard much about, but obviously the role of the Holy Spirit is absolutely central to our synodal process and to the way in which we are relational with each other because we are guided by the Holy Spirit um, we want the Holy Spirit to be central in our lives so that we have this gift of discernment um, through the grace that we are given and within that grace also this sense and openness to recognize the dignity and the presence of the Holy Spirit in all so these are key pathways and themes that run along the center the core really of what it means to be synodal again walking alongside others accompanying others but it's also about and this is potentially what we're what's exciting about these sessions is that we are looking to renew we're looking to renew some of the structures that enable us to hear each other to recognize the role of the holy spirit in our lives that process of discernment and so that takes courage to look at where we are, to look at the renewal that may need to take place, um, but to do this in a really uh, unified way, listening to each other. And really, actually, we can only do this through speaking our truth and through listening to each other and doing that in a really prayerful way and prayerfully reflective way. We're here in a shopping centre in central London, and it might seem a long way from the time of Jesus. But in terms of the feel and the noise and the bustle of people, there'd be something very similar, I think, between this place and the Jerusalem of the early church. Let me tell you about two events that took place after the resurrection. When Jesus had risen from the dead, he appeared to his disciples in the room where they were gathered. He showed them the wounds in his hands and in his feet to prove that it was truly him. And then he breathed on them and said the words, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. It's a beautiful symbol. We breathe on our hands to keep them warm in the cold. We breathe on a tiny fire to kindle it into life. I remember as a child going to my window in the winter and breathing on the frost to melt it gently. And sometimes in a medical emergency, we might literally breathe new life into someone. The second event was a few weeks later on the Feast of Pentecost. The disciples were gathered together in the same room with Mary, the mother of Jesus. And suddenly a sound came from heaven, like the rush of a violent wind. Something like fire appeared in the room and the flames seemed to rest on each of them. And they were given the miraculous ability to speak to people of all nations in the language of their own tongue. This is the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, who forgives us our sins, revives our souls, and gives us a share in God's very life. He is a divine fire that sweeps through our lives turning everything upside down, burning away all that is unworthy or impure, and giving us light, energy, confidence, and power. 
The Holy Spirit is the love of God sent to us from the Father by his Son, Jesus Christ. This is why Christians speak about the Holy Trinity, that the one eternal God is three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so precious because he transforms us from the inside. He takes the broken pieces of our lives and makes something new from them. God is working in our lives. The biblical word for this is grace. The grace of the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. He gives us the gifts of faith and hope and love. The gifts of courage and wisdom and joy and peace. He gives us all the spiritual gifts that we need in our lives to live a life that is truly worthwhile, a life that will be a gift to others and to God. Perhaps the greatest gift we're given by the Holy Spirit is the gift of spiritual peace, to be at peace with God and with each other, because we know that we are loved by Jesus Christ. And because of that, I can find peace with myself as well. We don't have to pretend that everything's okay. We don't have to justify ourselves anymore. We can admit the mistakes we've made in the past and the difficulties and struggles we still experience because we know that Christ has conquered everything in his resurrection from the dead. And he gives us forgiveness, healing, and hope. So what can you actually do? Well, you could invite the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. That's the first and the simplest thing. It doesn't need to be complicated. Just to say, Holy Spirit, please help me or Holy Spirit, come into my heart. It's a personal prayer. It's a small act of faith, and it could make such a difference. And we also need the help of the church, because the fullness of the Spirit is given through faith, repentance, and baptism. But this is a bigger question, and I hope we can come back to that later. So also, I just wanted to, first of all, um, think about and reflect just very quickly with you on some of those wonderful themes that Father Stephen talked about. Um, he talked about this, the power of the Holy Spirit, um, giving the disciples this power of speech to communicate with everybody and anybody that they came into contact with. He gave them this power. But also, Father Stephen mentioned, and this is why I particularly like that segment, because it speaks of, he talks about the Holy Spirit energising us. Um, he talks about the Holy Spirit giving us life and confidence, energy and power. And to me, that's hugely inspiring um, and fills me with a sense that actually we can do a huge amount together. And so there's a lot of inspiration um, that I feel, as well as that overwhelming sense of spiritual peace that we can um, hope to share in. So hopefully that has energized you and um, encouraged you as to what we can achieve together and specifically to achieve together this evening as well. Um, before I before I hear from you and before we we hear shared experiences um, and get into some discussion, I just wanted to draw your attention to the encyclical that I referred you to. Um, and if you hadn't had a chance to look at it, then just hopefully to sort of draw some themes for you and to just um, give you that sense, actually, that this is this is a wonderful document and a really beautiful document um, from St. John Paul II, um, talking about the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. but within this wonderful foundation so he talks about the holy spirit as the giver of life and again we see this theme of um the holy spirit enlivening us this energy and, and enthusiasm um, enlivening the church and the whole of humanity the document also talks um about the the trinity and this this relational um this foundational relationship between all three persons of the Trinity, as well as um, the role of the Trinity in salvation and giving us hope. 
it he talks in the document about the Holy Spirit in the life of the church and very much that's where we are looking to focus our attentions, particularly within this um, theme of synodality. So we're looking at the sacraments, the mission of evangelization. Um, obviously, Sycamore is rooted in the, the whole concept of evangelization, how we do this effectively, how we speak to people on and reach people on the margins of society, those that haven't heard um, the news of Christ and the gospel message. So this mission of evangelization, I think, brings us to this really exciting place this evening and within this program um, of uh, sessions that David has invited us to give. Um, but the document also speaks very concretely about the role of the Holy Spirit and the life of the individual, the human person, um, how the Holy Spirit can strengthen um, us from within how the Holy Spirit exalts us um, and, our, and also in terms of giving us this wonderful sense of prayer that actually it's the Holy Spirit that is activating our desire and our response in prayer. So the role of the Holy Spirit in our spiritual life and in our moral, moral judgments, our morality generally. But very importantly and crucially, this document speaks of the Holy Spirit and the role of the Holy Spirit in the world. The relationship again, so we hear this, this theme, this recurring theme of relationship, um, but looking at some of the challenges that we know exist in contemporary culture, um, we see this rise in secularism um, and how to battle, how to counter that is very important and the role of the Holy Spirit in helping us, giving us that courage um, to face those challenges which we see every day of our lives and I'm sure you've got lots to share in terms of experiences of this and finally the need for social justice and this is this comes through really concretely through that document um and it might be that and and please do if you would like to share anything that you found from reading that document then please do or you might like to so you can put this in the chat or you might like to bring this into the discussion groups that we're going to be engaging in in a little um, while. So really drawing out those themes for you um, and with us tonight on the role of the Holy Spirit, um, as articulated by St. John Paul II. Um, I particularly thought that section three um, was concretely rooted in the role of the Holy Spirit in our in our spiritual life. Um, the power of grace and what we can achieve. Um, his wonderful commentary, as I said, on the role of the Holy Spirit in our own prayer life. So, yes, if you haven't already had a look at that, please do have a look at that. And, and, and to think about how we can really harness what Father Stephen was saying, harness the role of the Holy Spirit so that we can bring this light and confidence and energy to everything that we're doing um, and working together to do that. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I wanted this to be a really prayerful discussion and reflection. And I wanted us to come out with some really clear, direct ways in which we can move forward. So really making this um, an engaged session, but firmly rooting everything that we're doing in prayer. And I thought that what we could do now, before we think about sharing our experiences and sharing our everything we've been reading and listening to, I thought that we would have a few minutes where we quieten ourselves and we really bring this gathering, this very special session this evening with all of us together to the Holy Spirit. So I'm just going to invite you to take a few minutes just to be quiet. just to think about inviting, as Father Stephen said, the Holy Spirit into our lives. And inviting the Holy Spirit to be with us in the discussions that we, we are about to have as a diocese coming together. And to strengthen us as individuals and as community. And before we begin our discussions, I'd like to invite us all to pray uh, the prayer on screen to the Holy Spirit. 
Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. From me, I just want to say thank you very much again for having me. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mark. Um, as always, you're a, a wonderful support. And thank you, everyone that's contributed to the discussion this evening. Thank you very much. I'll hand over to you, David. Thank you. Oh, I just me scream. Anyway, thanks very much, Susan, for, for leading this evening. Um, like you, I thought what people were, were feeding back was was really good stuff mm. and uh and yes i think the holy spirit was is present is constantly present so um so thank you to you but also and to mark for his uh expertise in the background there it's also great reassurance and thanks to all of you who've joined us for this second session and that you've you've took a risk i think to to share with us and so i thank you for that and so shall i just say that um we finish with maybe saying a glory be um, in thanksgiving to God for all we've shared with one another. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may God bless you and all those that you love, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.